Carl. So in Las Vegas right now for CES 2024, I'm gonna give you my best highlights, best of show, best of the tech that I saw for this year. This is actually uh, my 10th show, so a bit of a milestone for me, and I'll kind of go through a sequential order of what I saw first, and usually Samsung kicks things off. I'm actually staring at the Sphere right now. We did have an event there that was maybe my low-key favorite highlight out of the show, just because the Sphere is uh, so new, just an incredible experience. You have to like kind of go there yourself to see what it feels like, what it looks like. The visuals are just absolutely nuts. But Samsung was really big on TVs this year. QLED 8Ks was the big thing. And a lot of talk around AI on this. I feel like AI was, I don't wanna say the buzzword, but it just seems it's everywhere here at CES. If you took a shot every time you heard it, you'd be pretty tipsy the first couple of minutes in. But uh, for this TV, a lot of 8K upscaling. Nothing is really shot in 8K at the moment, uh, let alone uh, 4K, but that ability to upscale is always nice. Great to see like older shows you can watch in a bit higher quality. And that's all powered by their new AI Gen 3 processor. One thing that I really saw that caught my eye was the world's first uh, see-through OLED panel, essentially a see-through TV. Really cool use case when you have say like a display case, something behind or say sports going on behind, you can see stats on the screen but uh, let me know uh, what you guys thought. After that, I hit up Asus. So they did have a lot of new laptops. Their ZenBook Duo is probably one of the coolest uh, dual screen laptops that I've seen. Once again, another world's first 14 inch OLED display dual screen laptop. You can remove the little keyboard cover. They also came out with new ROG laptops, the G14 and G16, that's the Zephyrus. That's the sizes respectively. It's got this really cool LED light bar across the middle. Finally, a laptop that doesn't look like the traditional RGB gaming laptop with all the funky lights. I think this thing looks pretty sleek. And lastly, the Air Vision M1, a pair of augmented reality glasses. It was hooked up to an ROG Ally, which I'm still uh, kind of on that wait list to review. So Asus hooked me up. There were uh, some pretty cool things. That was Asus. So next from LG, another big hitter. Uh, they had three specific products that I like to focus on. So their LG Gram, funnily enough, that's 10 years of LG Gram, which kind of lines up with uh, 10 years of me coming at C. Yes. So a bunch of different sizes for that. So they have sizes all the way from 14, 15, 16, and 17. And this year they have a new LG Gram Pro, which is 16 and 17 inches. And those have dedicated graphics. That features the RTX 3050, and that fits in 12.9 uh, millimeters of thickness. So once again, great for traveling, great for shows like this, when you need the form factor, when you're putting in a lot of steps, uh, like most people do at CES. The LG Ultra Gear Gaming Monitors, 39 inches of pure curve OLED goodness. Uh, that's what I'm looking to upgrade uh, myself, uh, the first upgrade for 2024. 240 hertz, 1300 nits of brightness, and they also had the world's first dual mode monitor where you can switch both the refresh rate and the resolution, which I thought was pretty dope. I also saw the MyView Smart Monitors. That features a uh, WebOS 23. Those are in 4K. They come in a bunch of different colorways. Great for just general studio use. And lastly, the Cinebeam Cube. Once again, a device that I've seen kind of evolve over the past couple of years. It's still in a small, ultra compact form factor. 4K, it's nice and bright, and it has a bunch of different accessories that you can add. I think it's a great little projector for the house. Speaking of projectors, moving on to XJimmy. The first was the Horizon Max, which is the world's first IMAX certified long throw projector. It can rotate around and it calibrates on any surface. The picture quality on it and the brightness was kind of one of the best, honestly, projectors that I've seen. And the second was the Aladdin. This one kind of slots up onto the ceiling. It's built off the success of their Magic Lamp series and also has a Nintendo game built in. Uh, so any gamers, when you like to play on projectors, I thought that was, uh, yeah, pretty cool. Switching on to automotive tech. So I've covered VinFast vehicles before. I actually went to their factory in Vietnam. So now their VF8s are uh, starting to hit the roads. I've seen a couple actually in Canada already. VF9 still slated to come out uh, this year. They came out with this new VF3 model. So it's this really affordable EV. It's got this really small compact form factor. It still has two rows. It has a fully usable trunk and I think it would be great for the city. They also partnered with Across the Spider-Verse and had this really sweet uh, wrap on their VF9. So that's a full-size luxury SUV. It has three rows, six seats, and features ride view where you can actually sync six different external devices, external screens to what you're watching so everyone can watch uh, Across the Spider-Verse in the car. One thing that I was really stoked to check out was their new concept uh, pickup truck, which was just called the Wild. It looked uh, you know, straight out of the future, almost uh, looked 
like a Cybertruck kind of thing. It was cool. During the unveil, the Jabberwockies came out and uh, really put on a show. In the truck, the entire back glass and back seats can kind of come down to extend the bed of the vehicle. So if you're towing something large, uh, you can kind of slot that in. I know that pickup trucks are pretty popular in Canada, so it would be great to have one for the future uh, house build. And yeah, like I said, VinFast vehicles are being rolled across uh, you know, the world, depending where you are right now. And I even got to ride on one of their uh, VinFast little e-bikes, which is kind of cool. I met up with one of my homies out there. Uh, that was always fun. So moving on to Smart Home, I'm gonna touch on this quickly because it's gonna be featured a lot in my new house build. So I'm working with a company called Savant. They're actually based on Mac OS, but they're also coming out with a lot of uh, consumer plug and play items like their uh, GE lighting line. A lot of smart light bulbs, one that even works as a flashlight. So the light bulb actually still works when it's uh, completely unplugged. A lot of smart lighting strips, so you can create a lot of different scenes Scenes, tons of different colors but the big focus for my house build is the integrated uh, smart home which really revolves around things like uh, say shading systems they had little NFC taps with uh, your phone where you could actually activate the shades to go either 50% down all the way down they also had this power system which was really interesting so obviously things like EV charging but uh, their breaker system uh, where the switches are think of something like uh, how ring doorbell did for uh, doorbells to make those smart Savant is doing that for your breaker system. So you can see all energy usage, what appliances are taking up the most amount of energy. You can see that on your smartphone, you can see that on your iPad, everything's super integrated. And like I said, can't wait to share more about Savant. Uh, keep an eye out for them for uh, smart home tech. And for the rest of it, while I was walking through the show floor, I'm gonna kind of give you my one-liners on the rest of the big companies that I saw. So for example, Sony, they brought out their new Afila car, but they had it driven out on the keynote with the PlayStation 5 controller. Would you ever want to control your car with a gaming controller? I let you guys uh, kind of decide that. Not that this was new, but they had these sweet little Gran Turismo pods, maybe something that I could build uh, once again in the future house. Speaking about TVs, like in terms of overall size, TCL had this massive 163 inch uh, micro LED uh, TV. The thing was like taller than me. Pretty impressive stuff. I mentioned how much I like my experience at the Sphere and at this Wonderland booth, they had a mini version of it. So kind of cool to see the tech that went on behind it. The good old Body Friend booth, which I feel like I see every year, it has those uh, transformer massage chairs, which uh, I would love to use obviously at CES on the feet a lot. So many people just like chilling, relaxing, getting uh, little body massages. Send me one, please. A fun one for me was uh, drone soccer. Even though I suck at flying drones, there's like apparently this World Cup of drone soccer happening uh, next year in 2025. I think it's like in Korea. Maybe I got to brush up my skills for that. Weirdly enough, I saw a Bugatti themed scooter. It was called the Electric Max uh, 10 inch. For whatever reason, they had Bugatti branding on it. Uh, Cool. You know that I'm big into F1, so there was this Indy Autonomous Challenge, essentially a Indy chassis, but uh, without a driver. So fully autonomous, these vehicles are like driving around the track. I think like the use case for this, a lot of that, uh, you know, self-driving tech, if they can make it work on race cars, eventually transfers over to us normal plebs that drive uh, on roads. There was a D&G Dolce & Gabbana for all of you fashionistas uh, themed uh, razor chair with RGB lighting, uh, if that's any of your fancy. And if we weren't doing enough walking uh, to round it off for the health stuff, we saw Kingsmith. They had these really sleek and compact treadmills. Like I always thought treadmills were the ugliest things. It's nice to finally see ones that are compact way more minimal looking and I added some extra steps and tried to run before I was exhausted which is what I am right now. So that was kind of the end of my CES tour. You can hear all the cars going. It's kind of the end of show. I'm wrapping up here. Hopefully you guys enjoyed my recap. If there were any things that caught your eye, let me know uh, down below. Hope you enjoyed it. Signing off for my 10th year at uh, CES and moving on to next year 2025 for year 11. Catch you guys then.